Hi, it's Keegan, and I am in southwest Turkey in Mulya province, and it's near the port city of Bodrum. I'm at a place called Lucky Spring Farm, and I came here because I found it on Workaway, and they're building these super adobe dome homes. There's one that is like finished. Let's see, down here, <laughs> behind that nice olive tree. There's a lovely olive grove. Some of the trees are really old. Um, and it's two domes that are joined in the middle, so it's living room space between them. One dome is a bedroom, actually two bedrooms, because it's two stories. And it turns out it's three stories because it goes below ground level. It's built on a terrace, and so you can go beneath the two bedrooms in the one dome uh, by entering the next terrace down. There's a number of terraces here on Lucky Spring Farm and in the adjacent land. Um, and then the other dome right now is used as a music uh, place. There's a piano and a drum set and yeah. And so they're building another very similar type of dome home right next to it. That's going to be like the guest house. And right now there's some guys over there working on plastering. And it's really interesting. They're using lime plaster that's mixed with these like little styrofoam balls. And yeah, uh, I guess that, that adds some um, element of, I don't know, soundproofing-ish. Uh, I'm not sure why they use the styrofoam balls. That There was a reason. Um, <laughs> it seems pretty strange. Uh, maybe I'll get a, a ch my chance to to try doing it before. I've done some plaster that was very different in, in South America before at a Hare Krishna temple. And it was actually, um, I was staying in a similar shaped structure down there. They, they call them trulies, at least at this project, and one other that's like it in Peru. Um, maybe you've seen or heard of the Eco Truly Park in uh, near Lima in Peru, um, I was staying at a Hare Krishna in the north of Chile, Hare Krishna temple in the north of Chile, um, and staying in one of these like cone-shaped domes. That that one, those were made of like a dot of regular like adobe, not super adobe. So super adobe is um, basically earth bags. It's kind. I'm not sure exactly why they call it super adobe. I guess it's because it becomes quite hard. So you, it's also called rammed earth. Um, and so you fill these plastic bags, um, or you know, polyethylene or whatever. Uh, this uh, these bags, they're long, a long white bag. Well, they have lime plaster on the outside of that, so you can't really see what it looks like. But actually, on the very top, there's a ring of that one. You can see there's a ring that I actually helped put that on there. Um, the day after I got here, which was like three days ago. And so you, you fill up the bag with earth. Well, it's a mixture of earth and a little bit of cement. And it has to have little stones, like some gravel in there that helps it adhere to itself. Um, and a little bit of water, just make it moist. And then you mix it all up and then you put it in the bag and you place the bag where you want to have a structure and then you compact it with a hand tamper and then you yeah it, like it'll dry and it'll be hard and um, you know some people then like burn the bag away because the bag is no longer needed because it stays hard and there's different ways to do it um, not everyone uses cement uh, actually this um, super adobe dome home um, like synchronistically was designed um, mostly well with some help from the owner but mostly w uh, by River Paul River Richardson who I went to go work with in Tennessee last year uh, where he's building a like a freedom community uh, that's a uh, hempcrete building school so people are going there building a village uh, for people that want to go live out in the country and have a healthy hemp home and uh, yeah so you learn learning by doing 
and I went down there and helped for a bit last summer, like right at the beginning. And uh, yeah, so River is just a brilliant like uh, permaculture de designer. Uh, you know, he's an architect. Uh, but he has some really nice designs that he's done for our villages and now he's realizing one in Tennessee and uh, this was his um, his first uh, like natural building project I believe and uh, I didn't uh, make the connection when I found this in uh, Workaway it was only after I was talking to the owner and he was like oh yeah I know Paul River Richardson too so <laughs> uh, it's a small world and it's getting smaller as I um, venture forward here in the, the, let's see, well, now it's late September, it's almost October now. Um, it's officially autumn because we've gone through the September equinox. I hope you all had a beautiful equinox and that you're going forward into the last part of 2024 with lots of good energy and it's exciting times. So, I want to share a bit about um, where I'm going in the bigger picture, which is uh, to build a community of people that are, you know, interested in creating freedom. And what I learned that I didn't know, um, staying in Dominhur, well, I guess I might have known it, but not have said it explicitly. And, and that has to do with, like, what causes freedom in our lives. And the uh, one Dominhurian perspective, um, you know, in case you're not following my journey, Dominhur is where I spent this summer. It's a eco community, spiritual community in the northwest of Italy, near Switzerland, and uh, it's 50 years old. It started as a meditation school in Torino 50 years ago, or so. And uh, you know, they built these amazing, they call them the temples of humankind, underground temples that have beautiful artwork and yeah they do ceremonial magic and you know they're branded as a cult but it, they are a lovely community and they have they teach their philosophy uh, if you want to go there and learn it like I I started to anyway I was just there for the summer and uh, they had this perspective that freedom actually comes from discipline and it and it makes a lot of sense when you think about it um, if you don't discipline yourself and then then it inevitably you're going to have to um, take discipline from somebody which is taking away from your freedom basically so if you want to have freedom for yourself you have to have discipline from yourself and that's uh, you know that's that's what I'm wanting to inspire is uh, is um, you know, within myself and then also with anyone that's watching my videos is uh, creating uh, autonomy, creating self-responsibility, self-discipline to create freedom. You know, that's, that's one aspect of it. And the other aspect is, and I mean, it's really one and the same, but um, a special and important part of that is communication you know having disciplined communication having a diligent um, you know willingness curiosity to uh, to integrate other perspectives to to not just be uh, you know self-interested right but what interested in the greater self which is you know the many in the one we are all one on this beautiful earth it's one organism one cosmic organism beyond the earth even you know the great universal being and at the so it's one we are all one and at the same time we are many and we each hold a perspective uh, that's unique and we each hold um, you know special uh, ingredients so to speak uh, towards the universal soup and uh, super soul soup <laughs> and so you know sharing ours and expressing it something that I want to encourage, something that I want to do, and also having that openness and that um, active curiosity to go and learn from others, other perspectives and to be constantly integrating more and more. You know, uh, enlightenment is, is not something that is really uh, individual. It's, and, and you know, in, 
in my life, I've, I've done a lot of reading and investigating around this concept of ascension, you know, spiritual ascension. And it's also, it's not something that's individual. It's about um, us together as a collective, as humanity, as a planet, um, raising our vibration into, and I think that has to do with exactly what I'm talking about, you know, integrating diversity into a harmonious cohesion. So we can, we can live as one and celebrate living as many. So this is like, this is the process that's necessary uh, as a, a daily um, learning, you know, uh, the drive that's, that's, that's pushing us forward towards our soul growth, towards becoming more and more whole by integrating different perspectives, by, you know, being exposed and being open and, uh, and also, you know, bringing out from within that special essence, that special ingredient that we have to, to make a, um, a beautiful contribution to the, the universal experience. And so, uh, the other, there's one other aspect that I want to share that's about that, um, that's about what it is to achieve freedom and what it is to, you know, to, to be on this quest of evolution. And really, that's our sole mandate, really. Uh, and, and that has to do with our, yeah, our connection with the earth. It has to do with our service uh, to the earth. And, you know, so it's really the same thing that I'm talking about, but uh, I want to add the dimension of um, not just, not just that we are, you know, meeting new people or, um, you know, having conversations that are transforming, you know, our perspectives, uh, but also, you know, conversations in a different way uh, with the, the beings that we don't necessarily see. Um, maybe some of us do, you know, like the, the psychic people, uh, the, the invisible realm of spirit and the elemental energies that are so much a part of our daily lives but often go undiscussed, you know, because our culture is so materialistic. Um, and, we, you know, we've deviated so far into that materialist mindset. Uh, but really that has nothing to do with true reality. <laughs> true reality is all about spirit, energy, and vibration, and, um, you know, energies that are that are beings that are living, like each thought that we have creates um, a thought form that's like its own, it has its own life. And if many people think the same thought, then it has more life, it comes more of a force in the world. And, and so this is another thing that they were doing in Dalmanhur, is uh, you know, consciously developing relationships with the, uh, the thought forms, the uh, deities, if you will, the, the gods and goddesses that um, we have created. And you know, I'll, there's more about the Dalmanhuri philosophy, which I won't go into, uh, but uh, it's, you know, it's some, definitely something interesting that, I, that I'm integrating now as a long process of going through the summer l living there and, uh, and, get, and you know, having a, another step towards getting more in touch with this invisible world and uh, something that I felt maybe they didn't focus on as much there is the specific place. Like they're very like big picture in Dominhur and like, and that's needed and it's valid. Um, uh, and they're, they're here to create like global transformation in spiritual humanity. Uh, but I think it's very important that we get in touch with the place that we are, that we have like, some sort of exchange or way of conversing with the energies and the beings that we're interacting with, with the spirit of a place. You know, in Hawaii, they, um, they use the word aina, and it's not referring to just to the land, but it's actually the spirit of the land. And everywhere you go has a unique spirit that's there. And so this is the journey that I've been on of traveling the world and you know, getting into spiritual touch with uh, these these Aina energies, the different spirits that are in the land, 
you know, and in the air, in the water, everywhere. Uh, a beautiful rainbow of diverse uh, beings and and essence. And, um, you know, this might seem a bit far out for some of you. Hopefully it's hitting home and resonating that we are, we are this beautiful super soul soup that's uh, constantly growing, changing and evolving, influencing each other. Like I said, we're many and we're one and we're growing as one, but we also have that beautiful uniqueness that uh, I think it's so important to to celebrate and to acknowledge and to honor and respect. Um, that is really, I think, uh, what's gonna lead to a uh, happy and fruitful future for all of us is, is this, this tenacious willingness and deep um, respect, you know, authentic respect for um, the uniqueness within each of us and you know, living and let living, <laughs> to live and let live, to to allow um, each of us to be on the journey, to be at the place where we are and, and have the perspectives that we do. And, you know, to be able to hear others and see others for, for, for who they are and uh, to, you know, to give them the respect of, of, of being just that. You know, that's what, really, that's what love is, you know. Love is, is, is acknowledging, it's, it's, it's allowing people to, and beings to be who they are, and also, you know, being in service to who they are. Um, getting to know them, and, and that way, be a support, you know, as, as a mother and father would to a child, as a sister or brother would. Uh, because we, we are all related. And so, does the quest to be in right relationship and um, these buildings that, that are being built behind me uh, are also towards that, you know, towards, uh, to, towards having harmony, towards creating also a habitat uh, to live in that is, you know, natural and, and conducive to health and to the flow of energy in a healthy way and this is the really the vantage point that's going to that's going to propel us towards success is seeing things in terms of the energy that is expressing itself there or that is yet to be expressed and to 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 create space for that to be expressed and be part of the universal tapestry or song or However, however type of artwork that you might term, that you might come up with, you know? So, uh, yeah, I, that's, uh, I wanna share that I have some wonderful resources like a Telegram group that go along with this channel. And uh, I'm gonna post this on YouTube, but I mainly have been posting on Unite.Live. And if you're watching it on YouTube, I encourage you to check out Unite.Live, Unite.Live. It's a uh, censorship-free platform that's, you know, also about freedom, you know, free flow of information, and allowing us to express ourselves in just the way that we that we want to. Not not saying like, oh, this is against our community standards if you say certain words like YouTube does, um, and uh, so yeah. Uh, Come to the Telegram group, also Law of the Earth. I also have a Facebook page, uh, but like I said, that's uh, that's also something that's censoring us. And uh, I want to share before I end this video that today is the third day of a wonderful um, series that's called Lessons in Law. If you've been watching me on here, you've seen me promote before the Sovereign's Way Academy which is wonderful teachings from Greg Paul, uh, who you know, uh, is a man that has been on this journey towards conscious evolution, taking personal responsibility to really, um, you know, <laughs> growing up and not just being uh, a child forever, like a lot of people uh, 
are just giving their responsibility away to governmental institutions or um, just accepting um, without questioning uh, what what like so-called authority is telling them and you know my my hope and my my quest is to inspire more of us to look within for that source of authority and to go on questioning and um, you know to do it with love and uh, to, to do it in towards harmony and towards peace and greater understanding but uh, the law lessons in law from the Sovereign's Way Academy is going right now and it's free and I'm gonna put a link uh, so you can check it out in the description also put links to telegram and I'll put a link to the YouTube of the owner of this place so you can see more about the building of these amazing super adobe structures and um, you know, it's also a permaculture farm here, so there's some ancient olive trees, and there's a big uh, greenhouse, like, polytunnel that's uh, got a banana tree and a papaya tree that's producing fruit, and he's got moringa here and uh, Malabar spinach, and it's really cool, um, you know, even though it's like a kind of a desert environment, uh, there there's lots of um, good botany that's... that's it's starting to thrive here and blossom and grow so so happy to be a part of it hey here I am in the polytunnel lucky spring farm and uh, there's the beautiful banana trees and this beautiful papaya with the fruit on it so it's exciting actually had some papaya salad with that uh, the day after I got here I think and I wanted to make a correction to what I was saying before which is um, in the plaster it's not styrofoam balls it's uh, perlite I think they're using perlite there um, and so that I don't know it's adding some texture to the plaster um, somebody thinks it's a great idea I don't know <laughs> the the confusion was coming from the owner explaining to me that they used styrofoam balls in some cement that they put on like the roof terrace above the bedroom domes in the first one that they built um, and I got to help actually put on like the floor or like the sandbag um, at the base level of the there's gonna be like a, a roof deck on the next one that's be still being built um, but anyway the floor of that of the like roof deck is um it's uh styrofoam balls and cement in this existing one uh so it makes a light lightweight um and fairly strong uh floor to walk on when you go up on top of the building um they're going to do it di differently in this one that they're building still um and that is with a thinner layer there's still going to be a layer of cement um, oh, and they are doing a uh, metal grid, which I imagine they also did a metal grid to reinforce in the existing one. But anyway, I'm not sure. They're definitely doing a, a you know, one of these, um, you know, strong metal grids to reinforce the cement on the roof above the bedroom dome in the new Super Adobe building. And there's one other thing I forgot to add about Super Adobe is in between the layers of earth bags they put barbed wire and that helps it not move um, and I was thinking it might be nice to make it like more organic like uh, to put some like sharp I don't know I was dreaming about this as I was laying in bed uh, to like little put, put like little sharp something that's not barbed wire just like from an energetic standpoint, uh, having all this uh, kind of random metal is, I don't know, maybe it's not the greatest. Uh, I was thinking, oh, even like like little sharp like bits of crystal or obsidian to like make it real spiritual. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but also the in like I was talking about Damanhur in the temples of humankind, they use this technology. It's called selfica, and but that's like you know, made in a specific way, but they use metal uh, also, so it could be
put to a positive spiritual use if you know a good way to do it. Um, they say in Dalmanhur that selfika is like an ancient technology that was used in past uh, advanced civilizations like Atlantis. Uh, there's a lot of uh, you know focus that goes towards Atlantis in Dalmanhur, like it's a sort of like almost Atlantean revival in in ways. Um, they have a strong connection there, and so they are saying that the Atlanteans, like for example, in other ancient civilizations, used this selfica technology. So what they do is they basically make these little um, specifically shaped metal. Um, things and they also use um, like little glass balls that have alchemical substance in them so that's getting very like involved in like working with spiritual energy in a very specific way uh, but here in super dobe dome building they're just using barbed wire and so I forgot to mention that in the other video in, in the first part Water tank, dome home, another dome home. On this terraced hillside in Mulia, not far from the port city of Bodrum.